Will Miles with Reading Reaction here. Normally, you don't see this after the game. I usually do a written recap. But when Florida beats Georgia, and it's for pretty much the SEC East Championship, well, you got to do a video at that point. So, you know, a couple of quick observations here. Obviously, Florida outgains Georgia 571 to 277. Absolutely dominates them in the for- first half, 411 to 166. It should have been a lot worse than 38 to 21 there at the half. But obviously, the pick six and then the 75-yard run to start the game. Game. You know, one of the things I think that's been a hallmark of Dan Mullen's teams is that they've been able to come back when they've been down. We saw that against South Carolina in 2018. We saw, especially after losing to Missouri and Georgia back to back. And then we've seen that sort of over and over their ability to be a fourth quarter team. Well, this team hasn't necessarily been a fourth quarter team yet. But to be down 14 nothing to Georgia after having lost the last two years under Mullen, all the pressure on their backs, and then for Trash just to absolutely lead the team to a huge win for the Dan Mullen era. I mean, the reality is, is that you go 0-3 against Georgia, you're pretty much out of the SEC East race if you lose this game. Now you're 4-1, you got everything under your control, completely unranked, all your opponents from here on out are unranked, and you have a quarterback who can absolutely dial it up against anybody. 30 of 43, 474 yards four touchdowns and interception he was unbelievable in the first half 26 attempts 341 yards 13.1 yards per attempt when florida needed him the most dan mullen did a great job in this game in terms of his game planning 10 receptions for 212 yards for his running backs you could see that he had seen something on tape where florida was going to be able to take advantage of the linebackers for Georgia with the running backs and they went to it over and over and over again, just absolutely dominated there. And then the defense, the defense, you know, Todd Grantham's defenses, the hallmark of those defenses has been not necessarily a shutdown for the entire game, but a shutdown for a quarter or two. And tonight in tonight's game, 12 plays, 25 yards, 2.1 yards per play in the second quarter, while the Florida offense had 25 plays for 253 yards. That's when Florida went on the run and really put Georgia away. And then in the fourth quarter, when the offense was really struggling, Georgia, 16 plays, 19 yards, 1.2 yards per play, two interceptions. Our defensive backs finally getting a couple of interceptions. Trask, yards above replacement. My stat for valuing quarterbacks, 3.21, 3.21 overall. The Georgia quarterbacks, negative 2.99. That is the difference in the game. You can talk about the last 13 or 14 years, whatever it is, in terms of the team that runs the ball the most wins the game. But here's the reality. When you got a guy out there who can just chuck the ball like trash can, put it in his hands, let him chuck it. Yeah, you're going to get one every once in a while, like the ball that Webb, the defensive back for Georgia, dropped that might have changed the complexion of the game. But the other thing you're going to get is explosive plays. And there were nine explosive plays through the air, a pass to Zipper, a couple of passes to Davis, the pass to Gamble for the touchdown when he was wide open. Pitts making unbelievable plays out there. So, you know, only four explosive plays for Georgia, two of them on the first two touchdown drives, and then the pass to Jackson from uh, from DeWan Dewan Mathis after the game was pretty much out of con- out of control. Same thing, twenty yard run for White um, Zamir White there in the second half, and Georgia had to punt on that one. Um, you know, obviously, I think we'd like to see Mullen be a little bit more aggressive there in the second half, but you he could see what we could see, which is that the Georgia quarterbacks did not have the ammunition to come back and really make it a threat. And so why not continue just to run a couple of minutes off the clock, punt back to the opposition, and see what they can do? So. A huge, huge, huge win for Florida. I had picked Florida to win 28 to 27. Um, Obviously came pretty close on the Georgia score, not close at all on the Florida score. Florida probably could have put up 55 or 60 if they really wanted to and really needed to, but they didn't need to tonight because the defense was able to take control of the game and able to really, really, really salt it away with turnovers and also, you know, able to take advantage of the fact that Georgia's quarterbacks were inexperienced and weren't, and quite honestly, weren't very good. Obviously some things to fix um, on the offensive side of the ball need to do, a, need to do a little bit better in the running game, only 37 rushes for 97 attempts. You're averaging 2.6 yards per rush. That's not going to get it done against a team like Alabama at the same time. Um, you know, 43 attempts for 474 yards through the air, 11 yards per attempt. That's absolutely going to get it done against Bama. There were guys running free for Georgia. That's one thing you need to be concerned about if you're looking at the Florida defense. There were some opportunities for Georgia to hit big plays, and they weren't able to do it. Guys like Mac Jones are going to hit that, but there's not really anybody else on Florida's schedule that you would expect to hit those sorts of plays. Jarek Warrantano is just as inconsistent as some of the guys for Georgia tonight. You've got either Terry Wilson or Joey Gatewood there at, at Kentucky. So – 
and then you got Vanderbilt. So I, I don't necessarily see as long as Florida comes out and plays the way they're capable of, and as long as Trask keeps playing like this, you know, this team should go to Atlanta. That's the reality is they've got one loss they can take because now they've got a two game lead on Georgia. And that's, that's what this one really, really proves. If Georgia wins this game, they're not losing any games the rest of the year. Florida's not going to be able to catch up. And I think the same thing applies to the Gators. So, you know, hey, huge win for Mullen and the team. Hopefully they enjoy it. Get back to work on Monday, though, because part of the issue with all the COVID um, rescheduling and all that sort of stuff is having to play seven weeks in a row in the SEC. And we all know the SEC, the best conference in America, one of those places where you can't take any weeks off. An SEC win is an SEC win. But, man, is it sweet when that SEC win is Georgia. So Mullen improves to one and two against Georgia, gets that Kirby Smart monkey off of his back. Obviously, Georgia has been the class of the SEC East the last few years, but the class of the SEC East, no more, at least not in 2020. Um, obviously, this is going to be a big battle for the next few years to come, but this is one Mullen had to have. He got it, and the reason he got it is because he was getting Heisman-level play from his quarterback, Kyle Trask. So that's my quick review of the game. This has been Read and Reaction. Check out my site, www.readreaction.com, for a full game recap tomorrow. Go Gators! If you like these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Or you can follow me at WillMonsSEC on Twitter or at Facebook.com slash Read and Reaction. Until next time, be a smarter fan.